What's up YouTube? Big B here with Ironclad RC. Thank you guys for riding with me. We've got the handmade hand laid fiberglass RC boat back on the block. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's missing a little something. I took the uh, hard shaft out, the straight shaft that we had in this boat previous. We're going to be replacing it with something a little more adjustable. We have an Aquacraft 0.150 flex drive cable with 3 16 inch prop shaft the Teflon liner. We're going to be picking out the stuffing tube, bending the stuffing tube to fit our needs and epoxying it into the boat. We're going to be using this Pro Boat Sonic Wave 36 inch uh, strut and we're going to be uh, modifying it with a DIY homemade bracket for the back of the boat. Uh, we're going to install the drive dog, call it, grease it up, everything start to finish. So stick around. Big B here with Ironclad RC. What we have here is a .150 liner that fits this .150 flex cable with a 3 16 hard shaft. We have our drive dog, our collet, our strut, and a quarter inch stuffing tube, brass stuffing tube. Now you don't want to use copper stuffing tubes because it's too pliable it's too bendy it's not strong enough you see how easy that was to bend now i'm putting the same amount of pressure on this brass tube and it's not bending whatsoever so i recommend a brass stuffing tube for your uh, rc boat flex cable applications now we're using this 3 16 inch strut that came with this really large bracket and the way my boat is designed it has an overhang as you can see so it kind of limits the uh, hardware size that we could put on the back of this boat see how this thing is just too too big too big for this application so I made this homemade bracket I welded the seams here I made it to fit right over our steering linkage steering through hole see how it just kind of goes right up on it that's about as high as i can get it on this boat so basically i'm going to have to drill a larger hole into our strut because the lowest point on this on this boat with the with this bracket it's going to be way too low in the water so i've actually marked some holes See the marks here drill this out first so we could kind of do a dry fit and then we'll start bending the stuffing tube the new bracket on and it's a lot lower than it was before let's see if it's going to work on the boat now yeah that's gonna be it that's it right there that's the height we've got our strut ready now we can start bending the stuffing tube 0.150 to 5 millimeter collet I'm gonna get it tightened down on the flat spot and I want to put this collet where it's going to permanently, basically permanently be so we can get our cuts right for the stuffing tube. We're going to get this little band in it. And I'll put this flex cable with the Teflon liner in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So, you see how that slight bend is right here it's about where we want to put our bend at i was thinking about running it back toward the back but it looks like it's going to be right in here is where we need our bend so we're going to put the stuffing tube back in grab the marker and our bend's going to be from here basically to the end of the shaft right in there and basically just the slightest of a bend 
should work for this boat. Not all boats are created equal, so you have to really uh, pay attention to what you're doing here. I like to get a small like punch and put it in the end of my tube, especially if I'm bending toward the end here. And we're going to make a small bend. It should only bend where we applied the heat. So, see that little bend we got there? Minute. Very small. Alright, we're going to put it in the boat. And then we'll put our flex cable in there and see if it lines up perfect. No way I got this stuffing tube bend right the first time. It looks like I did, y'all. Holy cow, let's see what it looks like coming out the stern. Yep, it's pretty much in line with the keel of the boat. And it seems like it's lined up pretty good where the collet is. Yeah, it just needed that little bend. So yeah, yep, good deal, good deal. We're go so we're going to roll with that. Damn, I got lucky on that. Huh. All right, so now we need to put the strut up to the stuffing tube and basically get a cut going and kind of shorten this stuffing tube up a little bit. I just put a little piece of extra quarter inch stuffing tube in the strut and we're going to mark how far it went in there. So that's our line. All right. And then I'm going to put this up on the boat like we're going to be mounting it and mark the end of our strut right here where the strut actually meets the the stuffing tube. So it's the little mark. So what I'm going to do is take my little piece of stuffing tube I marked previous, put it up to the little mark. That's how far it's going to go into our strut right here. That's the end of our strut when we have it pushed up to the collet. And now we're going to mark it there and we need to take and cut this piece here off. I'm just going to leave it just a hair long. Okay, then we can always get my file and ream out the inside so it doesn't drag the, the shaft at all. Burr up our shaft, scratch up our shaft. Strut's gonna go into it. Now let's put the strut and the stuffing tube in its place and let's see if we got our mark right our cut right all right so yeah we got our cut right the brackets off the transom about three about three millimeters you guys see that and the way I designed this bracket it's I like to do testing as you all know so I designed the bracket so that I can start off with my propeller way back here surface drive uh, if i don't like the way the boat performs i can cut my stuffing tube back and move my strut to the next hole and get it a little bit closer to the boat and if that doesn't work i can cut it a little bit closer and again move my strut closer to the stern so that my propeller is just behind my rudder. Uh, all that plays a big role in the way your boat performs. You know, if it's too close to the boat, you're not gonna grab enough water and go. And if it's too far away from the boat, it's gonna wanna uh, do all sorts of funky things. So there's a happy medium on each hull. Allen wrench stuck right into the hull where the stuffing tube's going to be mounted at and I'm just kind of lining it up with the keel of my boat straight in line with the keel
It's just in like quick, fast, five minute epoxy. I got some coffee stirring sticks to mix it up with. And like I said, I like to use this five minute epoxy only on my initial setup of the stuffing tube. I, I really don't like uh, leaving my stuffing tube unattended for 24 hours waiting for it to dry you know there it can get bumped or moved uh you know just the littlest smallest offset in your stuffing tube will cause all kinds of aggravation later on so i like to get this set up as quickly as possible and then we'll pour our 24 hour slow cure epoxy in the in the back where it goes through the transom so we're going to pour this right right in the middle of the stuffing tube here and this is just going to get it like fastened in place so we can do the final epoxy later on Got you guys a different position here. This is the position that you're really going to be using the most when you're when you're getting this all set up and lined up correctly with your keel. So you want to look down to keel your boat. Make sure your your stuffing tubes directly in line. This is the last time, your last chance to, to fix any imperfections in the system uh, before everything kicks off. So you want to make sure this is done right. So I'm going to try to work fast here because this is 5 minute epoxy. And uh, so just kind of bear with me. So i got shims on both sides of the stuffing too. I'm going to check my alignment on the bottom of the boat. Then I'm going to come in here check the alignment where it meets up to the collet you want a little gap there but not much maybe four or five millimeter five millimeters at the most i'm going to run about two or three if you if you have a real big gap right here then your uh, flex cable will spin up and kink or you'll break it where it rubs up against the end of your stuffing tube so uh, I do all my alignment with the flex cable in the collet itself. Make sure you got it in there locked in. I think I got it here, you guys. I'm pretty sure I got this lined up. Like I said, just take your time. It can be deceiving at times. Check your work. Check it twice. Let it cure up. Maybe mid-cure. Come back. Look at it. Make sure it's all in the same spot. So I got some 24-hour epoxy in this cup. Gonna we'll mix it up. All the little empty spots. We want a nice tight uh, waterproof bond. That's why I use slow cure right there. Right there. That's why I use it right there. And wipe off the boat. Get any of that epoxy off. It might have been on your hands. So the epoxy is all cured up now. It's been a couple of days. It seeped into all of our holes and crevices and really did a good job of, of, of sealing up the back of this boat. Uh, I've got the strut on the stuffing tube here. Just kind of wanted to kind of just get an idea of what I needed to do next. Uh, let's see if it's butt it up to the hole itself back here okay so I don't need to take any off my stuffing tube the strut base is going to butt right up to the transom and that's good I've actually you know grind put a grind mark on the side to kind of match the base here just kind of dressed it up a little bit uh, we're going to put this flex cable in. And 
and we're gonna we're gonna cut the Teflon liner. Basically, the Teflon liner is gonna butt right up into our strut here, and it's gonna go all the way up to the collet. So, I'm gonna cut it just a little bit longer. Make sure it's butted up to the collet. Cut a little bit longer than it's supposed to be. Teflon liners cut. All I do is cut our shaft to length and install the strut. So it's going to go on there like that over the stuffing tube. So I can't get my marker in here to mark my holes. I'm going to use this little scribe tool I made. Make sure it's level on the transom. So we got our marks here, we're going to drill out the holes. Hardware off. And we're just going to start installing the base. A Loctite Marine adhesive sealant here. I put it on the base and we're going to get this thing mounted up. I'm going to go ahead and put a screw in. All right, so we got it mounted up. Both of the screws are in, backed up by washers and nuts. I used my handy dandy flex driver. Any boat builder should have one of these guys right here. It's just like a flex shaft, and it, you can get to tight places with that thing. Yep, any boat builder should have that. But we got the hardware in. I got the strut pushed all the way up onto the tube here, and we're going to have to cut a little bit of tube. See how it's not quite pushed all the way back to our uh, base. So we're going to have to cut the tube back a little bit here. So that it slides all the way into place. But it doesn't look too bad. Not too shabby. Going to use a file to file it off. Just a couple millimeters. File should work. So I got it all filed down. My whole lines up now I've got movement up and down well down really and I think that's gonna work I'm thinking about cutting this top part off right here so it looks more streamlined I just hope I don't run out of adjustability if I do that yeah that should be good that should be good. We've got everything installed. We're going to push our flex cable all the way up into the collet. Uh, we've got a, our adjustable ruler here. And we're just going to put it on our shaft and see where we need to cut this flex cable. So we've got to go all the way to the drive dog where the drive dog will be at, which is here. Keep in mind you need to leave three millimeters or so in between your strut and your drive dog uh, you have to leave three millimeters because of the cable when you when it spins up and from the torque it tightens up the winds on your cable so that it kind of shrinks the tube shortens the tube up when it's uh, a lot of pressure is being put on it so you've got to leave that little gap keep that in mind and I'm just gonna go all the way to where my drive dog goes which is right there I've got it marked and then we're going to take the cable out of the boat, go to the other end of the cable, put your cable on your ruler, like so, and mark your spot at the end with a marker. So we're going to put it on the adjustable ruler and mark right there at the very, t at the very end. So that's where we'll make our cut at, right there. All right, so the way I cut my flex cables with this cutoff tool. All right, now we're gonna grind a little bevel in the end of our cable. <laughs> my workstation out here, boats everywhere. 
put it on the bench grinder and just kind of grind a, a little bevel on the end of Oh, this, this is a bow I've been wanting to mess around with. This is one I built. It actually blew up on me. I was running a brushed motor in it, and I cleaned out the brushed motor with brake cleaner, put the hatch on it, and took it to the pond. Threw it in the water, pulled the trigger, and boom! Like a little bomb blew up, and my boat sank to the bottom. It blew a hole in the in the keel here and it blew off this side right here big seam it blew up because of the brake fluid the brake cleaner uh fumes was in there and i closed it up oh my god it was like a little bomb <laughs> that shit was funny so now i was thinking about making like a little blow boat out of it the, you know the top of it's flat and i could put you know a old brushless motor it's got a bent shaft so it would be perfect for a little blow boat brushless yeah, I might do that. The addiction is real. It's raining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. The things we do. Fingers crossed. So we've got the drive dog about three or four millimeters from the strut itself. That is perfect. So we're going to leave it there. So I'm filing down this uh, keyway here, this flat spot for our grub screw it's a little bit too small so our little flat spots big enough to accommodate the grub screw we're going to go ahead and put the hardware the screws and washers into the strut itself now all we got left to do is just you know put some batteries in here and spool the motor up and just kind of test it make sure there's no heat in our system make sure everything's lined up sounds sounds right and is running correct before we take it out to the lake all right boom Let's see if it's lined up with the with the boat oh yes Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's good. That's the money. I just tightened up the collet here. I made sure all my grub screws were tight on the collet and the drive dog. And we're just going to get this uh, hooked up so we can do a, a dry run here. A bench, bench test. Sounds good, you guys. Oh, it sounds good. Still gotta put some grease in here. I was just doing a dry run. Make sure everything was good before we greased it up. Alright, so let's listen to it now with no grease in our strut whatsoever. Just the Teflon liner uh, going through the system. Let's listen to what, what it sounds like with no grease. And then we're gonna put... The, the Grim Reaser grease in and, and listen to it with grease. So here it goes. No grease. You hear, you hear that? You hear, it sounds dry. Like almost like metal on metal. Alright. You can hear a difference. Wow, that's cool. You can hear the difference. Grim Reaser. Speed grease. And I just stick it in there. Suck it in the syringe. Put it on our fitting here on the back of the stinger. It's the reason I really got this stinger. All right, and now we can just inject this grease right into the strut itself. Let's spool it up a little bit and let it. Oh, I can hear a di big difference already. So we're going to push it while we're moving the shaft. Get some more grease. Oh yeah, do you see the grease sling out of the strut itself? Alright, so you see the grease on the end of the strut? In between the drive dog and the strut? 
you can hear a difference wow that's cool you can hear the difference all right we got the propeller on <laughs> Sounds good. No heat. D U N D. <laughs> Got it finished up. I'd say it came out pretty good. Uh, wanted to show you guys how versatile different struts are and, and that you're just not restricted to. Uh, the one base, you know, strut base it comes with. I uh, wanted to show you guys how to set up this, the stuffing tube into your strut. And I uh, hope this helped you guys out with your boat build. Um, I can't wait to get this bad boy out on the water again and give it some uh, trial runs. It should be a little more fun to drive. We should be able to get it to plane out with this uh, new strut. We have a lot of adjustability and options now so i appreciate you guys watching i got a little bonus for you guys i got a little bonus for you guys i got a little bonus for you guys who hung in there and watched the entire video in its entirety ironclad rc big b here thank you guys for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel and as always we'll see you next time So yeah, this is what I have to show you guys. Uh, this is a prop puller. My dad gave me the idea. Uh, I grew up around boats, and they, basically this is like a scaled down version of a real life prop puller. Uh, basically it just kind of goes in beha behind the ears of your propeller blades and locks in like that. And then if your propeller's stuck on there, you take your nut off. And then you spin this on, I'll show you here in a second, and it will pull the propeller right off the shaft, no problem. So you don't have to go home and end the day because you got Loctite on your shaft. So I've had to go home before because I couldn't get my propeller off the boat, didn't have a blowtorch. And uh, this right here will save the day. I'll show you guys right now how to use it. How it grabs the blades and then you just screw this guy here in of course we wouldn't have the the nut on you know but if your propeller stuck you put this on the back of your blade and then you screw that guy right there in and it will pull your propeller off the shaft just like a large-scale propeller puller always carry this little propeller puller with me uh, oh man it's a lifesaver three holes in a little block of wood one's threaded and then these two lock in behind the propeller alright yep so those of you who stuck around got a bonus <laughs>